All right, so Andrew, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, enterprise DNS and uh, cybersecurity. Sure. So I from the cybersecurity industry, right? So there's a lot of uh, hypes and uh, new things coming out in this industry, and more and more people want to also adapt to in this industry because there's uh, you hear all kind of news like hacking things. So uh, from Blue Cat or from I know your major solution is focused on the enterprise DNS side. So can you give us a little bit uh, overview about how that area can relate it to cybersecurity? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so Blue Cat's core business for since its inception many years ago has been on on, on core enterprise DNS, and 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 so when when we think of DNS, usually people think of the internet, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course it's a, it's a large part of it. Um, the internet works because of DNS and, right. and things like BGP and routing. So so DNS becomes um, a, a critical element of of how any connections made between two points. Mm -hmm. From the enterprise standpoint, there's also a, a, a private side of DNS. Mm -hmm. There's all their internal applications and data centers. Right. There's fundamentally DNS's use for everything from Kerberos authentication to, um, to uh, um, you know, the way Active Directory works to um, you know, the, the move to the cloud. I mean, any time uh, computes moving around, changes needs to be made to DNS. Mm -hmm. And so um, that DNS becomes critical infrastructure. Right. Uh, if DNS goes down, the phones don't work anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, nothing works basically. And so it's critical infrastructure and we've provided a scalable, reliable DNS for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, it, it relates to cyber for, for several reasons. I mean, one, um, DNS is um, a highly efficient way to block things that we might know are bad. So oh, a lot okay. of our customers spend, mm -hmm. uh, invest in a tremendous amount of threat intelligence right. to understand, um, you know, where, where indicators of compromise might be, and, and many of those are on domains mm -hmm. or IP addresses, for instance. Okay. And if I can block those because I don't resolve those domains, all right, or I don't. Resolve domains that that you know that where the answer is an IP address that I know is already bad. Mm -hmm. Then I've I've used a highly efficient protocol that I need anyway mm -hmm. to simply block something before it's hit my firewall or my web proxy or it's gone on firewall. the internet. Okay. Yeah. yeah, before there's been a connection made. All right, I've stopped there from being a connection made because I I don't respond or I. Mm -hmm send it to a sinkhole or I redirect it to a internal web page. Mm -hmm. I, I could do anything but give back an actual IP address for, you know, whatever that compromise might be to connect to something. So it, it's it's highly efficient. Right. Um, but that's that's sort of the simplest case of, mm -hmm. of it for cyber. It's also um, the, the DNS query data itself, the logs of what, what devices on the network are actually doing become very important to the to the cyber team right um, DNS is you know if there's been a DNS query somewhere mm -hmm. that doesn't ensure that there was a connection made between those two points but we know there was an intent we, we can infer some level of intent mm -hmm. because a query was made right and so if the DNS query history is a proxy for the intent of that user the intent of that device, now it becomes seriously rich information when we look at it over evidence, time. Evidence, right. Yeah, okay. it becomes evidence. It becomes, you know, I can go back and, and if there was a breach, it becomes a great set of data to go from a forensic standpoint. Right. Um, to understand what else might have gone to those sites. Mm -hmm. um, but also it becomes a, a baseline for what, what things on the network do every day. Right. And they don't tend to change that often, you know, so... Um, by looking at, at DNS query logs, I, I can I can identify without an agent if this thing is probably a user-driven device, if it's Windows, if it's a phone, if it's a back-end database server. Mm -hmm. When you look at the DNS data streaming off these devices, it becomes pretty obvious what these things are and what they're trying to do. Right. Um, and, and, and therefore, that, that data set becomes um, incredibly rich. So it's a fantastic... Point. Um, I mean, the signals from DNS are fantastic, mm -hmm. and you know the, the the reality is that anything that wants to reach the internet at scale, meaning, you know, let, let's say there's some systems been compromised and 
and, and the software that's been installed in that system is trying to reach out to a command and control server. If that command and control server is in one place and it's being connected to via its IP address, it's fairly simple to shut down. Mm -hmm. and, and just for the same reason that people use DNS to build scalable, robust, worldwide software systems, mm -hmm. uh, they build scalable, robust, worldwide command and control systems as well. And, and so DNS becomes an important part of how even a piece of malware might reach a command and right. control server. So um, it's, it's, it's there for the taking for the most part. And, and you know, you started off by asking, um, uh, you know, there, there's obviously lots of, lots of innovation and hype and new things that you can add to your security architecture to improve your security posture. But the other thing we saw was right. um, a lot of our customers aren't using what they have already. Okay. You know, and so from a DNS perspective, our hypothesis was, um, can we be additive to a customer's security posture by leveraging DNS more than just simply shuttling the queries mm -hmm. to a SIM? Right. Um, and and so so that's where these two worlds came together. Okay. Um, and and it, it's this wasn't news to the cyber teams and our customer base. Mm -hmm. They were desperate for this. They very much wanted to uh, use DNS both from a signal standpoint and also as a control point. Wonderful. It's a control point for the intranet. It's a control point for the internet. Right. Therefore, it can That's be used. Critical. Yeah, yeah. From a security standpoint as well. Wonderful. So, uh, if I can summarize that uh, for people not that familiar with uh, DNS, uh, DNS is like a like a dictionary, right? So you you check. You give me a domain name. You get IP address, so right. you can visit. So it's like this. But it's a fundamental infrastructure for the internet. Yes. Almost like at the same time, if you visit a website, you need to have the DNS. Yeah. And uh, your point of view, if I can summarize, the number one is because it's a, at the base level, the low level, so which means it will affect the everything uh, above that. Right. So it doesn't matter if it's application or the system. So if you can control at the DNS level, that will be the perfect, right? right. So, Another one I think a critical you mentioned, um, before even you hit your firewall, you get from the DNS. So which way should you block the hackers as early as possible? Right. Before you even come to the list. Because the earlier the better. The earlier the better. Right. right. Another part is efficient to get there. Of course, the DNS give you rich information. When whoever query that one, give right. you a lot of information. Uh, so you can do the network traffic capture, but you can also capture the information from DNS point of view. Right. So it gave you the f doesn't matter is for detection or forensics. So you right. get a lot of information from there. Absolutely. Um, so um, okay, so that's a general DNS. So why it's important? Why that relate to cyber so good? That from enterprise level. So what's the innovation piece? How do you put those as your CTO? Like how do you put those innovation together with the, the yeah. DNS? Yeah, so we looked at where we thought we can add value, and um, and there, there's there's plenty of um, of DNS firewalls out there today, I including our own, that um, sort of look at the DNS queries on the way to the internet, mm -hmm. or perhaps they're in the cloud and company sends their queries there, and uh, and and we we have one as well, and and um, uh, and that that capability adds a layer in the defense in depth. But we were looking to see where we could add even more value. Okay. And since we're already inside of our customers' networks, and, and you know, I mean, our larger customers have three or five hundred Blue Cat servers in their networks. Mm -hmm. Others have twenty or thirty or forty servers. We're already in their networks all over the place. So the idea that of capturing this mm -hmm. as it left the company right. um, was was um, seemed parody to us. How can we gain more intelligence from DNS? And mm -hmm. from our perspective, that means being as close to the things actually issuing the queries themselves. Right. DNS tends to hop through servers before it goes out, and every time it hops, you lose the attribution of who actually made the query. Okay. So we wanted that because if we understood the context of that client, yeah. then, then we can do even more. The best example comes from our retail customers. Uh, point of sale machine queries, I don't know, 27 different DNS names. That's what it does. If it queries a 28th, even if it's google.com, it's compromised, rip it out of the wall, because it doesn't normally do that. Mm. If I have a DNS firewall outside the network, I don't know that that thing was a point of sale machine. I just know that there's an unattributed DNS query coming out, and so Google, that's on my whitelist, I'll go resolve it. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get 
as far into the network as possible. Okay. That was one. The second was uh, DNS configuration can be um, complex. Not, not for the DNS administrator. We have wonderfully capable and bright DNS administrators out there. Yeah. But I don't expect a security professional to be able to wield DNS configuration. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if I did, then um, uh, he, he might be, he or she might be less less able to, to meet their um, requirements. And so we also looked at this as an opportunity to deliver a policy-based DNS engine for security. Okay. So now I can add um, uh, business level policies mm -hmm. that we Blue Cat can compile into specific DNS configurations. All right. So, um, so that's automation kind of things, right? Yeah. One side of it's automation. The other side of it is just ensuring that DNS can be addressed via the same types of policies where I'm going to address my broader security architecture. Okay. Uh, with the same sorts of nouns and verbs that I talk about in my broader security mm. architecture, um, as opposed to. I, we may or may not use a response policy zone, for instance, in DNS to do some of this. Mm. It doesn't really matter to the security professional mm. if what we're using to do this, they more so care about um, uh, applying a specific type of policy right. that's that's fundamentally abstract from its implementation. Mm -hmm. So make also the standard consistent way to you got get it. that, right? You got it. So you imagine, everything right. is part of an architecture. Right. And you want to do it uh, right, right? Yeah. So, uh, consistently, right? Right. And also, uh, you mentioned intelligent to basically get the valuable information intelligently. And you mentioned make it at a standard, like a consistent uh, setup correctly. Once you get all those information, how do you present that one or analyze those things, to make it that meaningful? I mean, visibility also very Yeah, no, for sure. Right? Um, yeah, and we do, um, you know, we, we analyze a ton of that data. And um, and I, I've I have some people that create some amazing visualizations of this data. Okay. That dashboard um, or those uh, yeah, diagrams that end up getting boiled down into dashboards for our customers. Sometimes I wish I can show them um, uh, the sort of back end analytics we do, the visualizations of that. Right. They're potentially less meaningful to customers because they're complex. But but we're trying we're we're trying all sorts of different ways to visualize uh, the data to try to create meaning out of it. I'm a huge yep. huge believer in that. Uh, especially to allow your 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 brain to find patterns, you right? Know, th Neuroscience. These look, different. <laughs> these look different. Why do these look different? Yeah. And um, and so, uh, but yeah. So a piece of that certainly is um, analyzing the data and bringing it down into something that's actionable or meaningful. Mm -hmm. We've discovered, um, and and we expected we discover, but and so therefore we're super happy we discovered that. Analyzing this data not only provides value for security, but also provides value for the network team as well. Okay. A lack of visibility of the core behavior of DNS and what things are doing right. also creates blind spots for those trying to optimize the network itself. For sure. And so when we start looking at this data, we see, we see poorly configured DNS, mm -hmm. and that starts popping up in serve fails and latency issues and we see poor caching strategies, we see um, um, you know, mismanagement of, of ARPA zones, like all sorts of stuff starts showing up mm -hmm. if we can actually start analyzing the data um, mm -hmm. and where that leads to improving the performance of the network because DNS is working appropriately. Those insights are just as valuable to our customers as the security ones. Right. So it's not just the security, but also the network performance as well. Absolutely. And also tells you which one you need to maybe tweak a little bit more or fix. Those. That's you also got it. Very, yeah. Okay. Cool. So you got uh, the intelligent to capture. You you get uh, putting all this together, make it a standard. You visual like make it a visual to the users, and. Uh, do you put a, uh, what's your philosophy? You, you, the thing seems like there's a lot of data, right? So you capture everything. Do you think uh, more is better or like a uh, simpler is better or like a how? We try to capture everything. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we played around with the idea of, okay, well, we know that stuff's not bad or we know that stuff is less interesting, so why bother capturing it? But if we don't capture it, then we don't have the frequency data we need. Okay. And, you know, we look for things like, um, I don't know, beaconing behavior, you know, query that's running every minute or something that, that looks odd or peculiar, and you need the data for that. But also, as we try to baseline what's normal, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I can tell you just looking at the DNS data if this is a corporate laptop or a personal laptop. And that's only because we capture everything. We do those okay. sorts of analytics. So uh, we capture everything or everything we possibly can capture. All right. And, and we think that's important. Um, now, we may store and represent the data in, in different ways uh, to optimize the way we're analyzing it, but mm -hmm. it, we think it's very important to capture all of it. Okay, wonderful. So capture capture all, but uh, when you present the data, you're kind of doing the filtering. Or yeah, of course. Depends on who you look uh, look at that data, so you may give a different view of it. Absolutely. That. Okay, wonderful. Absolutely. So, so far, when you combine, like, uh, so putting DNS uh, and the cloud and the network, cybersecurity, what do you feel? Is that the, the right path and in the future, like uh, you want to kind of continue to? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting part of our evolution. Um, our, our core value proposition has always been critical infrastructure. And one of the things for sure with critical infrastructure is a tendency to not want to change it often. Right. So it was a very interesting dynamic. How do we, how do we um, deploy something that we're going to change rapidly as we innovate? Mm -hmm in a world where where it's critical infrastructure and 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 many customers don't want to change it mm -hmm. and so we we invested heavily in creating um creating operating models that would allow our customers to make these changes rapidly mm -hmm. um and so that core capability now gives us the opportunity to innovate much faster and so yeah it's it's um data intensive but it's also finding new ways to solve problems um, now that we can address them quicker. And, mm -hmm. and I don't mean problems with our software. I mean um, uh, problems in managing a worldwide, very complex global DNS in, in a huge financial institution, for instance. There's way better ways to do things than the way they've been done for the last 20 years. If you need to introduce that over five years through slow uptake of technology, in some cases, you might as well not get started. Mm. If you can rapidly introduce those things, great. And so a core part of what we're trying to do is alongside of our critical product, uh, deploy the capability to, to innovate quickly. Mm. And so it's core on, on, on enterprise DNS. A big part of that is security we talked about. A huge part of it's automation. A okay. massive part is automation. Okay. It's the difference between the rate of change in our systems in our running in our customers between today and the five years ago when I started mm -hmm. is dramatic. Okay. Um, Click a button and get a jump yeah, down. <laughs> it, 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 it went from self-service, so allow the business user who is deploying new applications who doesn't need to know how DNS works to go to a single simple web page, click something, get it yeah. done, great. Uh, to, to where it is today where I need to do that thousands of times. So I'm not using a web page. I'm I'm orchestrating this as part of a um, as part of software. It's, mm. it's it's infrastructure as code. You know, I, I I'm deploying something, and therefore I need these three new zones and these 150 records, and I just expect to be able to do it. I, I don't want to create a help desk ticket. I don't want some. I don't want an expert to have to mm -hmm. to um, spend any time thinking about how to implement that. I just want it done. Yeah. And and so. Um, and this is this isn't just DNS. This is broadly happening across oh, uh, all network pillars and security pillars, mm -hmm. for that matter. It's um, infrastructure must be addressable as code, mm -hmm. and it must be flexible, changeable, and that is driving a lot of um, uh, value in our customers now, and it's a, a large part of what we're investing in. So, okay, infrastructure. You know, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's critical infrastructure, security, automation, and, and that's been sort of the course of what we've been investing in for quite some time. Wonderful. All right, cool. Thank you very much.